Hey, 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 welcome to another week of the Ply Magazine 51 Yarns Spin Along. My name's Bex from the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast, and I am doing a video each week which corresponds with that week's topic on the Ply Magazine Spin Along. I am not sponsored by or affiliated with Ply Magazine in any way, shape or form. I just like it as a resource. This week's topic is from fibre you processed. So I had to think about this one a little bit. I wanted to make sure that I, at some point in this series, talk about drum carding. Um, there are episodes coming up on true worsted and true woolen, so I didn't want to deal with hand carding or combing. So I thought this would be an interesting one to talk about this week. Basically, this is from a fleece that I purchased four years ago with the intention of making a blanket. I had this idea in my head, and this was probably the start of my intentional spinning journey. I had this idea in my head that I wanted to make a blanket, possibly some kind of geometric design, or maybe a more traditional hap style. And I wanted it to be natural colors of wool. And I bought this fleece. This is a Shetland fleece. And it was one of those that's kind of multicolored. So there is brown. There's a much bigger chunk of brown over there. Brown, white. And then I also had bits where the color wasn't particularly distinct in terms of its separation. So there were white bits and brown bits pretty close to each other. So I have already carded up this, which is the mixed color. So it's kind of come out a grey. I've already got the white and so the next step is going to be to card some of the brown so that I get my next colour. So let's talk about how I'm processing that fleece. The first thing is that because this is a Shetland fleece and because Shetlands are slightly double coated to varying degrees, some are more double coated than others, when you sort through it, you might find that there are sections of the fleece where you have this fibre that is more hairy than woolly. And if I pull on one of these tips, and show you the difference in the staple length between the two. So I've got this one. And then this is like the standard staple length. So you can see it's almost double the length. So the first thing that I would do is to go through and separate those because that I probably wouldn't want to include in the bat if possible. I would want to try and keep it all to just the ones that have the shorter staple length like this. For the purposes of just making it a little bit easier to see in this video, I'm actually gonna use the brown rather than the white because it will just show up on camera a little bit better and it'll be easier for you to see what's going on. This is a classic carder. These are handmade in the UK and I have the one which is a 72 times per inch, but it's also the longer times so that you can get a little bit more fiber on them. First thing that I would do is to make sure that my drum carder is reasonably clean because the last thing that I did on this was a fairly light alpaca BFL blend. Um, I did clean it thoroughly after I did that, but I'll just kind of take you through what I do in terms of the cleaning. Have a little look around the carding cloth and just make sure that there's no sort of dirt or debris in there. The reason that you use a porcupine quill is because it's nice and flexible and so it doesn't damage the teeth of the carder. Okay, so I've given it a little bit of a clean. The next thing that I'm gonna do is to sort through some of this fleece and just pick out sections that are good sound locks of fleece. Again avoiding those ones which are a little bit more hairy. This fleece was pretty sound, very well shorn. The, I don't think I've come across any second cuts in it yet or extremely minimal second cuts at any rate. So there we go, we've got a little selection on there. 
So the other thing that I'm doing with this fleece is because, particularly on the on the darker fibre, you'll see that the tips are a little bit bleached. So the tips are a little bit lighter than the rest of the fibre. I don't mind a little bit of variation in this. It's not like I'm trying to get it absolutely perfect because, you know, it's natural fleece. And I think it's nice to keep a little bit of natural um, sort of colour variation within the fibre. But the tips are also a little bit more brittle. So I could actually pull the tip off like that. So I don't really want that to go into the drum carter. It's totally possible that if you just put that through the drum carter, that the drum carter would get rid of the tips, but I'm not really willing to risk that. So I'm just giving this a little bit of a flip card before it goes through the drum carder, which will just open up the tip a little bit. You can see the fairly massive difference. So that's the before, and then this one's the after. And you can see that there's far less of the light coloured tip in there. And it's also just nice and fluffy at the end. So the drum card will have no trouble at all in processing that. And if you look at what's left in the flip carder, all of this is basically those lighter bits of tip that were so brittle that they have just come off really really easily with a little bit of flip carding so for me personally with this project it's worth doing that extra step of the flip carding as I say just to break off any brittle tips and to unify the colour I should probably say that I don't consider myself to be any kind of massive expert in drum carding or in processing fleece. I don't really process a huge amount of fleece, to be honest, as might be evident by the fact that it's taken me four years to get around to doing this. Okay, so I've got my first little bunch of fibre ready to go through the drum carder now. There is a little bit of sort of white flakiness in this fleece, but from what I've already worked with, I know that that kind of comes out in the carding process, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. So all I'm going to do is just start turning the handle of the drum carder. I tend to do mine fairly slowly just to see how it's coming through initially. There we go, that's looking fairly good. There is a little bit here that I'm going to pick out. I'm actually going to do this with the porcupine quill again, which is just a little light coloured tip that hasn't come out in the carding process. So I'm just going to take that out at this stage. I wouldn't really describe myself as a perfectionist when it comes to carding, but I do like to try to take the opportunity to spot anything that's going to cause me problems later on and get rid of it at this point. So I'll pop some more through. I'm putting this in tip first. And then we'll just pop it through. So there we go, I am going to continue that process for a little while. So now I'm at the point where my doffer strip is fairly full. If I push down on that, it kind of springs back a little bit. And you can see that I'm kind of reaching the top of the times over here. I have got this brush on the back, which kind of pushes the fibre in. It allows you to get more into a bat. But I think I'm pretty much done with this bat, so now it's time to take it off. I am going to take my brush off the back of the card over this and then I'm going to grab my doffer pin and just pop it in that little ridge to get underneath the fibre. If you can't do this all in one go, don't worry about it. You should just take it in little sections 
this is where I kind of wish that I had it clamped to a sturdier table but uh, unfortunately at the moment this carder needs to be kind of uh, portable so I can't really stick it onto something but it's just going to stay in one place so I'm going to go through and just take off a little section at a time until the whole of the bat is free and you can kind of see as this is coming off that where we used to have quite a lot of flakiness in the fleece actually most of that has now gone so I don't think it was a particularly major issue in the fleece so that is now free and what I'm going to start doing is pulling it off the back of the carder so I'm just going to reposition this very slightly so it's easier for you guys to see it. So what I'm going to be doing now is pulling this back and laying it against the back bar, so this section of my cardo. There will be little bits of fleece kind of stuck in there, so I just go in with a porcupine quill and just kind of tease those up if they're wanting to stay stuck into the cardo. And then once everything's free, I just pull it back again. Because you're going back off this way, um, you're going with the teeth of the carder, so it's relatively easy to kind of pull it free. And even at this point, I'm trying to make sort of assessing decisions as to whether I put this through again, which I think I might well do just to get it a little bit more blended. You can still see chunks where you've got those lighter tips showing through against the darker butt ends of the locks. You can probably see that I'm fairly pedantic about cleanly getting bats off. Nothing wrong with that. And I'm also just finding any little noils in there any little leps and just pulling those off and there we go bat is now free of the carder and we have a nice squishy well carded bat I will probably put this through again because as I'm looking at this I am finding a few little neps in there and I'd also like to try and blend it a little bit further. So I am just going to pop this back through the carder, give it another pass. So I've just taken off some staple length strips. And in this pass I'm going to be even pickier about those little neps. So anything that I do not want in my final fibre is going to come out at this stage if I can grab hold of it, if I notice it. So just a little staple length or so each time. And just pop it back through. I'm turning it a little bit faster this time because it's not got to go through that same process that it did originally. Um, all it has to do is just bring it back on to the drum and the faster speed is helping to throw off some more of that um, flakiness that we had at the beginning. So as I'm looking at this and I'm just going through and taking out any little extra neps, I feel like overall I have a much, much better bat now than I had on my first pass. So particularly for this fibre, I think it's definitely been worth doing. I, I put both of the other bats through twice, so that's why I'm doing it for this one as well. 
Um, I even feel like the the multicolored one I might have even done three times. I feel like sometimes when people talk about the fact that you get more neps on the second pass of carding your fibre. I sometimes feel like that's perceived quite negatively, like it's a terrible thing that you get more neps. To me, it's actually a benefit because it means that I've got the opportunity to sort these things out before they actually go into my fibre. I mean, you can see there by what I've pulled out of the carder, there are some neps in there that would have really negatively affected my yarn in the end and I'd rather have the opportunity to take them out now than later on. And there you go, that's it. That is my finished bat. I definitely prefer it after two passes than I did after one. I can still see a few little imperfections but I think those will be fine. I don't want to go pulling those out of the bat at the moment because it's just going to mess the bat up but I'll take those out when I come to actually spinning it so there you go that is the first of my dark brown bats to go with my white and my mixed grey okay so next up since this is a spin along rather than a prep along I guess I had better get to actually spinning some of it. What I haven't really worked out yet is how I actually want to spin this yarn, which is kind of an important factor. So what I'm going to do this week is some sampling. I think probably using the mixed colour because there's probably more of that than pretty much anything else. So I'm just going to tear off a little strip of this bat and we'll just spin through it and see how it spins um, worsted or semi-worsted and also woolen. Just because I've carded it doesn't necessarily mean that I absolutely have to spin it um, long draw and actually if I was going to spin it long draw I would probably form it into some kind of row lag first. So I'm going to try spinning it worsted to begin with. I'm on my mini spinner because that's what's free at the moment. Definitely need some more tension on that. Let's uh, get a bit more draw in. There we go, that's better. As I'm spinning this, I'm definitely getting the feeling that it really wants to be a woolen yarn. So I'm just going to do a little ply back sample so that I can see what it looks like. But then I will probably try spinning the rest of this little section as a woolen spun and see what happens. So let me stop it there. So I'm just going to pull off what I just spun. And I'll just fold a section back on itself and see how it looks as a T-ply. I would definitely want a lot more twist than that. But it's so airy. I just don't think that would work as a worsted spun. So I think it will need to be a woolen. Let's just try a T-ply ply back a little bit further down. Yeah, it's super, super, super airy. So woolen spun it is then. We will do a little bit of woolen spun. I'm going to keep hold of those samples though because it's always useful to know what a particular fibre looked like as a woolen and as a worsted. 
So I'm just going to tie those off a little bit later on. I'll pop those into my sample book so that I can keep a record of them. Um, and I'll also just note where my mini spinner speed dial is, which is currently at about 10 or 11 o'clock. All right, so this time I'm going to go for a little bit of woolen spun. I guess since this isn't technically coming from a row lag at the moment, this is technically sort of semi woolen, but I'm just spinning it with a long backward draw. So we'll see how that goes. I think it would probably need a little bit more twist, but I feel like I'm kind of on the right track. Okay, so I've turned the speed up to 12 this time. And we'll see how that goes. As I think I mentioned before, this is quite rough and ready as a, a way of testing it, but I would, if I decided to um, do it as a woolen spun, I would form it into rough row lags probably. That one's way too fast. You see how thick my yarn's coming out? <laughs> I don't have the time to keep up with the speed of that. So I'm going to pop the speed back down again to about 11 and see how that one goes. There we go, that's a bit better. I'm looking for more twist, but the ability for me to control it and to make it a thinner yarn. Okay, so let's see how that one went. I'm going to just go back a little way and get some from somewhere in the middle of that area where I turn the speed up. I feel like somewhere around there would be a good sweet spot for this particular fibre. So woolen spun somewhere around about 11 o'clock on the speed dial on the mini spinner. And that gives me a lovely, super, super stretchy yarn. I love it when you think about the fact that that's basically mostly air in the middle of that, but it's so super stretchy. And I think that would be quite a good, durable, all-purpose yarn for lots of different things. I'm just going to try also doing a three-ply ply back. I 
I think I mentioned in the first episode of this 51 yarn spin along that my default yarn is a three ply and that's both because it kind of matches my default singles with the purposeful part of my spinning and knitting journey and I really like this as a three ply um, it's just a really nice round yarn hmm I think it might have to be a three ply so there we go there is a little selection of different samples so these two were worsted spun but you can see there was there wasn't enough twist in them to start with but it's also just so airy it's just telling me desperately that it really wants to be a woolen spun yarn this one was uh, worsted spun but with a lot less twist than I really wanted this one had more twist and that was a two ply and then this one was the three ply which I'm just kind of in love with so I'm pretty sure it's going to end up being a three ply so there you go I hope that was useful to you uh, if it was please leave me a comment give me a thumbs up I love to know that making these videos is worthwhile for people also let me know what it is that you are either going to share as part of the 51 yarns spin along or something that you've completed right from fleece through to a finished object that you're really proud of whatever you've done with it everybody should be really proud of any project that they've completed right from fleece to finished product because let's be honest there's not that many people in the world who can do this so <laughs> be proud of yourself and your work if you have done that I really hope this has been useful to you and I will see you again next week.